Hey y'all, Jen Hernandez, Lone with Jen. Today we are talking about the top mistakes that people make on their credit. I'm going over six things, maybe I'll think of a seventh as we're going through this, but super important, you wanna stay tuned. Okay, we're back. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you find value from this video. There's arrows here somewhere. Okay, we're gonna get right to it. The number one, number one mistake that we see is letting something go to collection. Sometimes you don't know what's gonna go to collection, so I shouldn't have said letting it go because sometimes you don't know about it. Um, I wanna give you just the real quick details. Not every credit bureau is notified. There's three, Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. So if you're monitoring with Equifax, what if the credit collection is reported only to TransUnion? So you wanna get a monitoring that encompasses all three of your bureaus, by the way. And number two is if you get a letter in the mail, like I just had a doctor's bill recently and they were sending me nasty letters because I was investigating and I, why didn't insurance pay it? I was, I mean, I was, and also I was just kind of sitting on it. I was like, ugh, I don't have time for this. Well, I just got set up on a payment plan. I was like, you know what? I'll argue it later. The 900 bucks that I owe, I spread it out over four months. I got on a payment plan because they were about to send me into, they, I, I got like the third nasty letter and I was like, okay, I need to pay attention to this. So I did it just yesterday. So even me, I almost broke my own rule. Try, if anything possible, to just get on a payment plan, settle, settle it or investigate it with insurance later. A $10 collection is the same negative effect on your report as a $10,000 or a $15,000 collection. It's the derogatory activity and the fact that you ignored a bill like I almost did that is the effector on the credit, not the dollar amount itself. That is super important for you to know. Number two, revolving debt balances. This is the number two thing. It's 30 to 35% of your score. Revolving balances maintain 30% or less, if at all possible, to, of your high credit. So if, you, if your limit's $1,000, $300. And to note, even if you pay it off monthly, that's the biggest thing that I hear, once a month, the creditors report you when your statement cuts off. So your statement cuts off like on the 9th, let's say, and they're gonna report that balance. Because what if one month you decide not to pay it in full because you have financial problems and you lost your job? That's what the credit score mechanism is meant to gauge how you're utilizing the percent utilization of your credit card. So. If you're qualifying for a house, that's when it's super important and that's the number one free advice that we give people when we see their credit is, oh, if you just pay these down to 30%, you're gonna go up 40, 50 points, like literally, it's amazing. So, number three, student loans. Do not let them go to collection. Please, once they're in collection, you will not be able to get a loan, absolutely not. So if they go into collection, I've heard, I don't know this to be true yet, but I've heard possibly that if you do set up a payment plan for six on-time payments that the Sally Mae or the Federal Student Loan will take it out of collection and put it back in with your other debts. So uh, just get some information about that, talk to your lender. I'm actually investigating it now, so I'll probably do another video on it. But don't let it get there in the first place because it's federal student loan debt. You're trying to get another loan, likely FHA, that's a federal loan. So ding, ding, like they don't like it. So please do not do that. The other thing on student loans that we see a lot of is that people don't know that they're out of deferment and they, or they ignore the bad bill or whatever, however it happens. And they, they'll have 30, 60, 90, usually 90 days late, I'll see it come up on credit. And that delinquency of a late payment is just as bad as a collection as we went over in number one. So really pay attention to those student loans and the dates that they're supposed to go into repayment, okay? The next thing I wanna talk about are 30 days late. Please pay it like on the 28th day. If the computer 
goes to 30 days past the due date, okay, it is going to harm you. A 30 day late, so when you're applying for a mortgage, anything in the last two years that's late has a huge impact on your score. Huge, like 30 to 40% of your score is collections and late payments. Those together are considered derogatory, okay? Please watch those dates. I remember there was a time when I was younger that I had a ton of credit card debt and I literally, I made an Excel spreadsheet and I literally, I had days where there were pennies in my account, but I never paid anything late. I might've paid on that 28th day, but I, I made it because I really watched it like a hawk because I knew that it would ruin my credit. So please pay attention to that. The next thing I wanna mention is divorcing. So divorcing, I see a lot of people that don't know or don't pay attention. They just, they wanna get things done and they rush or they don't get proper attorney advice and, or no attorney advice and they do a quick, quick divorce through the courts and they don't talk in the divorce decree about who gets the mortgage debt, who gets the house. That's mistake number one. Mistake number two is they don't have the ex-spouse refinance. So if you have joint credit together, not getting off of the credit card or getting off of the loan, the only way you can get off of a mortgage, for example, is to refinance. The only way. You can't just call the creditor and say, oh, hey, we're divorcing. Take me off the loan. They're going to go, see ya. So don't do that because they won't do it. So you've got to make sure that the other spouse can refinance. So before you sign on the dotted line on the divorce, make sure you talk to a lender or they talk to a lender that they can refinance, okay? Because if they pay late later on and you're still on that note, the creditor doesn't care that you're divorced. You're still on that note and it's going to affect your credit and you'll be super upset. So the last thing that we want to make sure people know is co-signing. So if you co-sign, for an auto car loan, uh, a mortgage, anything with somebody else. I see a lot of people that are helping their cousin or their daughter or their mom and they're like, oh yeah, that's not my car payment. It's my, my cousins or whatever. It's great that you're being super nice and helping out family. I'm not saying not to do that. Just know that you, we have to count that debt against you until unless we can show number one you were jointly on the debt together and number two they make the payments directly to the creditor this is super important i, I want to repeat this because it's this actually i should put this as the number one mistake but it, i put it as number seven co-signing make sure you do it jointly with the person and that they make the payments directly to the creditor, not to you and then you pay the creditor. The reason is when you're going to qualify for a mortgage, we will in most cases accept 12 months proof that that other person pays the debt directly. Not nine months proof, not three months proof, 12 months proof. So be really careful before you sign on the dotted line and think that you wanna buy a mortgage in the next year or two. It's really super important that you understand that these debts, we will consider them yours and it'll go against how much you can qualify for. So we see that mistake a lot. I hope that you have found this very useful. I know that it's a lot of information. Please like, share, and subscribe uh, if you wanna see more videos like this and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Legacy Mutual Mortgage is an equal housing opportunity lender. The opinions expressed here do not reflect those of Legacy Mutual Mortgage.